What lies behind the uniforms? Are reenactors simply examining and honoring the past? Or are there hidden agendas, some unsuspected motives at work in the tent cities? The wonderful thing about reenactment is it's, it's a hobby that's open to everybody. You'll find in a reenactment unit every conceivable type of person and social strata, from doctors to dustmen, male and female, all ages, it doesn't matter. There is no such thing as a typical reenactor. And there's no typical reason for becoming a reenactor in the first place. A very good friend of mine, who's French, and has since gone back to France, uh, enticed me to go along to a society that he was a member of. Uh, somebody put a sword in my hand and showed me how to use it, and it was like an extension of my arm. And from then on, um, I was addicted. Both of my grandfathers served in the First World War. Um, I wanted to know more about what they must have experienced. I don't know, maybe I've always wanted to be a soldier and never, never got there in reality. And this is the, the next best thing, I guess. For me, it's the, lady, the style of the ladies' dresses. Because I'm an extrovert to start with, anyway. Um, I'm a show off. Um, I'm a big head and um, I can be whatever I want to be. I can be Kachinawa from the Indian tribe. I can be, a, I can be John Wayne if I want to be John Wayne. I can be David Crockett if I want to be David Crockett. I was aged about seven when my father took me to see that terrific film Zulu and it's had a lasting impression ever since. <laughs> I've always enjoyed history and I decided to take it a step further and try living it for myself and it's thoroughly enjoyable. The growing, you might call it a cult of, of reenactment, of living history, I think it tells us something very, very interesting about the kind of people we are. It's, it's almost more interesting in, in, in terms of reflecting it on ourselves. But to what extent does the reenactor's personality guide his choice of historical period? My particular interest in history is, is the experience of the soldier. And the American Civil War is one of the first wars where there, uh, a lot of the combatants were literary. Um, and th there's a, a wealth of information in letters and diaries from common soldiers that enable you to, to look at, at what the soldier's life was like at the time and try and recreate that. For some, the attraction is being a soldier. For others, it's being a warrior. There's no rigid structure as yeah. to what you do on the battlefield. Yeah. Your rank within the society does not yeah. correspond with what you do on the battlefield. We, we don't go marching about and have drill and things. Some people like the uniforms and the real flashy Napoleonic and later stuff, where it's all gorgeous, it's sort of gold lace and things everywhere. Some people prefer something that's not quite as decorative, but much more fun on the actual battlefield when you can actually get, get stuck in there. Someone that wants to be a Roman isn't likely to be the same sort of person that wants to be a Viking. The Vikings tend to be very individual people and like charging around waving swords in the air. The Romans like being told what to do and marching in straight lines. A bit of a generalisation perhaps, but it's very true. There was a young chap come up to me today. He's been in the British Army and he said he's interested in, in joining us and he said he's always been interested in the Roman Army. And these are the types that generally gravitate to us and there are others uh, I mean, we don't fight. There's no way that we can fight as the, as the Romans did with these things. So these other guys going to these other periods, perhaps they just like to mix it a bit. They like to get into fight situations. Most of the other periods, most people stand around decorously with either an 18-foot long stick, which they're not allowed to hit people with, or with a metal tube that goes bang. So you don't actually know that you've hit someone. But when you're out on the field fighting with one of these, you know when you've made contact the person you hit knows that you've made contact. And it's so much more fun to know that it's in your face, physical contact, everybody knows when they're dead and when they're still alive. But I could no way consider medieval or Saxon or Viking or anything like that. That just does not appeal to me. The people that choose to be Germans and the people that choose to be Americans and people that choose to be British all take on the national traits in a curious way. We do private mock battles for our own enjoyment, so we get a chance to try out tactics the way they would have been used. And the Germans, by and large, will be very methodical and work out their attack and then be very efficient going into the attack and taking them that way. A very typical German trait. The Americans, on the other hand, will mass and charge with as much firepower as they can muster and try and overpower anybody in their way. Whereas we Brits are quite happy to sit back with a cup of tea and wait for it all to be over and then go and clean up. <laughs>
The American Civil War attracts the largest single group in British reenacting. So what is the attraction in this period and in the history of another nation? It's extraordinary that here at this event today, more than half of the reenactors are American Civil War reenactors. How has that come to be? The answer that I've been getting when I asked these people this question is people get into it because they become interested in the in American culture. They become interested in in um, rhythm and blues or bluegrass, or they become interested in the music and the culture, and then they kind of go back in time, or cowboys and westerns and things like that, and from there they go to the American Civil War. We started as cowboys, we run a western club, we've always been cowboy fanatics, know what I mean? The old west and yeah. all this sort of thing, and this is just an offshoot of it, you know? Yeah. Basically, this is moving up, you're getting older and moving up to it, you know. I come from the south of England, so I always favour the Confederates. Uh, no, I've never actually been to the States. Um, basically, I spend too much money on importing the stuff from the States. <laughs> <laughs> when, when you're very young, it's watching some of the films and seeing the old westerns, the old time westerns, and you, it's the thought of wearing maybe a, a gun rig and a, and a, you know, a six shooter and running around the woods shooting one another like we used to do when we were so high and then you just grow and mature with it. I think there is also something about the American Civil War which has a sort of clarity about it. Um, it's far enough away, it's far enough back in time to not be kind of bedeviled with the sorts of emotions that come up, which the First World War reenactors, for instance, are confronted with. And yet it's close enough to our own time that we know a huge amount about it.